up. Okay, back over here. So I have the, I got in touch with the guys who are importing those pieces for the, well, the hoses that I ordered that had to come from Germany. They said they finally made it to the US. It'll be another week before I can start putting the intake back together, but I have the wiper cow stuff to change out. So I might as well just do that real quick or <laughs> it takes me long. It takes me like twice as long than anybody because I'm just trying to make sure it's done right. <laughs> and it's uh, the last time I did this, it was in the parking lot of Ala Moana shopping center <laughs> waiting for someone. And um, that was probably 20 years ago. So these things lasted pretty long considering, but you know, the edges are cracking and starting to rip and tear. So um, cars sitting on the first notch on the lift. I, I'm waiting for the fluid to come in because I didn't have the right stuff and I couldn't find it locally. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, so I'm waiting for the fluid to come in. So I was thinking I was gonna keep the car in the lift for that, but uh, I'll lower it to, to do this hood uh, wiper cow thing right now. So let's just get that taken care of. All right, let's put this thing down. Let's get it off the lift. I got a charger here. Okay, let's get this thing down. Take my charger off, floating my battery. Uh, this car has a little parasitic draw, um, but it, I don't think it's any more than it what it should be. I just don't drive it enough to uh, keep it, keep the battery conditioned. I, I've been through a lot of batteries lately because I don't drive the car as much as I should be. So I did buy one of those small trickle chargers <clears throat> and it's like an amp, but it can't keep up. So it's okay. I just, I just throw my regular charger on it and it floats the charge. I'm going to leave it there because I don't, as soon as I put this thing on the ground, everything's going to get all out of whack. The wheels want to spread out. Car wants to roll forward or backward. You know how all that works. So we bring you guys in for the main attraction. Oh yeah, how's that angle? That's the good thing about these uh, tripods that have all these different... <laughs> They have those legs that you can just position however you want. You can make it be like a bat. Right now you're like a bat. Pop that off. Okay, where are you? I just don't know exactly where that thing is but just work it off slowly there's a lot of uh, calcium build up around these things from just water and stuff okay mark the edge real quick I'm gonna get it super precise. There's some play in these, so I mean, as long as you get it, if you can get it as close as it is, it'll be exactly the same. I don't have wiper arm pullers, so we'll see how this turns out. <laughs> and once again, embarrass myself. So let's guess, what size is that? 13? Can't get in there with that. What is a 13? And the nut's not even tight, which is not a bad thing, but lift it up a little. 
at least I didn't smash it on to where it's like super tight and I need a puller which I don't have see wiper comes off easy <laughs> no stress uh Maybe I did that on purpose, knowing that I was going to take this off again. But that made it easy. So now it's just a matter of just pulling this thing off, I think. It doesn't matter if it breaks, because that's why I got the new one. Yep, and this is exactly why it's coming off. At first I was like, oh, I didn't order clips. <laughs> I think they sent me someone else's order, but turns out it was for me. This one has these things, I don't know why. Trim, trim nuts, trim your nuts. I'm a clips, that's why on this side. So keep these, don't throw those away. They didn't give me that. APC, this is my, uh, this is the local secret sauce. It's cut like one, two, four, maybe right now. I think I might need more. I think I might need more power. Because while it's just taking off the surface stuff right now, it's not really cutting through all this grime properly. Yeah, I'm using this app, Movie Pro, whatever. It's uh, it's pretty clunky. So forgive me, guys. It's not it's not foolproof. Oh yeah, like I was saying, I don't know, it's a, uh, I think this APC isn't cut strong enough to clean off this area as well as I'd like, so do this to start and I'll go get something else after. Or just a brush, you know, just get a brush and agitate it. I'm not easily impressed by anything that can't like melt something away right away. <laughs> I'm like, what makes it different than anything else if you gotta agitate it? The basic stuff you can buy and do that with and get the same results 99% of the time. There's a lot of stuff to think about when you're buying cleaners. Is it acidic? Is it base? meaning hot, more than pH 7, or base is 7, is it alkaline more than 7? Different pHs cut different types of grime, so you almost need like both of them to do the job completely or to do it, you know, thoroughly is what I meant. Certain areas of the car get exposed. 
two different types of grime, like rims versus, you know, lower body panels or upper body panels and behind the scenes action like this right here. So this is a lot of um, water spot type of thing, like a lot of mineral, a lot of mineralization up here from water sitting in this area, this cow area. So in theory, an acidic product would work really good here. And I'll show you, I'll show you this here. This is a prime example. I'm scrubbing this, it's not coming off. And show you what the difference is between an alkaline cleaner versus a at acidic cleaner. Okay, so this cleaner I'm using is an alkaline cleaner, okay? I sprayed it on here. It's removing like the, the actual dirty pieces, you know, and carrying it away. But you see this part right here, I'll wipe it and show you that it doesn't come off. And this is because like water has been sitting here. And the dirt embeds itself onto the surface with the minerals as they latch on. For those who don't really grasp the concept of car detailing um, and what different products do. This is kind of something that you have to understand so you know how to use, so you, you know, you buy the right products and you know when to use the right products. That's why there, you know, you may go to the detail shop and there's like a multitude of products out there and you don't know what to buy. Okay, just mixed up a acid base wheel cleaner. Okay, a wheel cleaner is generally safe on painted stuff. Polyurethanes will be fine with acidic wheel cleaner. So I cut this. This is one to one or fifty percent each. So watch, watch this brown stuff. Okay, I got water in another bottle with, with the foamer, but I, I, obviously I'm not going to foam water. I just don't want water being sprayed everywhere. I kind of want to control it. So this is where foamers are of good use. You can control where it goes a lot easier than a sprayer stream. We're gonna make this cherry for the next guy, okay? This is how I do things nowadays, sorry. I wasn't like this before, but I am now. It's not, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just trying to do the right thing. There's a guy on Instagram that sells a bunch of BMW parts and his <laughs> name is Do It Right Way. And I'm like, man, I dig this guy. <laughs> yeah, let's do it the right way. And but he he sells BMW parts, so um, and he's from Europe, so he's like, don't put cheap stuff on your car. Do it the right way and put the real stuff, you know.
rinse this, rinse it off. If you guys are worried about um, water going inside these holes or what I'm doing about that, um, I am not worried about that one bit in Hawaii because even if it's a little hot and there's a gap, it's not if, if it's not completely sealed is what I'm saying, that water will find a way to come out of here because once you put it in the sun, it'll just evaporate out once it starts heating up. I can see a bunch of water spotting there, and this is what people actually see on the car when the hood is closed. So I'm going to just agitate this a little bit with some acidic cleaner. Tell you what, though, this looks freaking way better. Let's get some air on it, blow it off. Make sure you don't blow it into your eye. <laughs> good hella clean okay we got some more alkaline cleaner on this I don't want I'm trying to use an acidic cleaner I don't want the alkaline cleaner neutralizing my solution here so I'm just gonna rinse off this stuff So yeah, regular water spot remover doesn't foam like this. So this is a little better for your painted if you're trying to get it to sit and dwell, you know, without drying out, which water spot remover tells you not to let it dry out. So this is a safer solution in my opinion. Like I said, if you gotta go full strain, just go full strain, but just try it, you know. Mix up a small batch cut halfway at least. I would say to start with half. That's, I wouldn't go any weaker than that. It's not worth it. The product doesn't work, if, especially if you're trying to do something like this, like clean old stuff off, you know, that's been here forever. Don't waste your time with cutting your products in half. You're going to, Probably just waste more product too in the in the process. But you're wait, mainly wasting time. Time. I ain't got time. The only thing I got time for is putting the paint in the fools who don't know what time it is.
That's the office linebacker, not me saying that. I know why these are here. Because guess what's under here in this box? The DME. Can't have holes above the DME, the engine computer. The German Brothers taught about all that kind of stuff. Versus Toyota, GM. Just let their. Their engine ECUs just hang out in the EC in, in the engine bay, all loosey goosey, all exposed, all heat soaked. It's like no thought process put into that. Don't know where to stick it. Just put it where anywhere in the engine bay. That's what you pay all that money for to get your ECU put away in a proper compartment. Okay, we're gonna protect these new cows. Try to make them last even longer than they did the last time. With the classic, uh, what is it called again? Aerospace 303. Trio tree. <laughs> Yeah, they like have this like rubbery thing blended into the plastic. We're gonna just slather this with 303. And then maybe even throw, or should I slather it with pearl? I don't know, what's better? 303 is supposed to be like the UV sunscreen, the, the sunscreen for your car. But maybe I'll coat it with 303 and then, I mean, I'll like uh, soak it with the 303 first and then use the pearl on it. They're both water-based stuff. Can't go wrong either way. So yeah, I got the I got the pearl in here, car pearl pearl. Like I said, cut. So this sheen on from the three hundred three, it it's nice. It's not. It's a little shinier than natural, but this will dull out as it as water hits it in the weather and stuff like that. But I think I trust the 303 to absorb more into the surface of this plastic and then uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to protect it with the pearl seal it, seal the deal
Thank you.